Joining us right now is South Carolina Senator and presidential hopeful himself, Lindsey Graham. Senator, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, I want to I want to ask you about the work you've got cut out for you, given these poll numbers. But before we get to that, let me get your take on the world and, and, and how you see it, because we know that Russia has invaded Ukraine right. and has now put troops in Syria. What should the next president do? Well, number one, I've never seen more threats to the homeland than I do today. Under President Obama, a radical Islam is running wild. Putin is walking all over us. China is threatening our allies in Asia and Iran has gotten the deal uh, of forever in terms of a pathway to a nuclear bomb, a missile deliver it, money to pay for it. Uh, our foreign policy is in free fall, free fall, free fall, excuse me. But our problem is that our two leading candidates on the Republican side have no plan to degrade and destroy ISIL. What President Obama is doing is not going to destroy ISIL. If we don't destroy ISIL, they're going to hit us. I have a plan to destroy ISIL. It requires more American ground troops in Iraq, a regional approach to Syria. But the problem we have is Republicans, we criticize Obama, but the leading candidates on our side have absolutely nothing different to offer in terms of destroying ISIL. And if you don't hit them, they're going to hit us. All right, so you want, to, you want more troops on the ground in Iraq to actually yeah. defeat ISIS. I want to yes. ask you more about that, but there's another issue that I've got to get your opinion on. The U.S., of course, sure. has been the most generous uh, in terms of supporting refugees from war-torn countries. What should the U.S. be doing now in terms of these refugees? Uh, 100,000 are expected to be let in. No, I, I don't think we're going to let in 100,000. What we should do is have a no-fly zone inside of Syria, a safe haven where they can go without being barrel bombed and not have to leave their country. Hillary Clinton's at least willing to do a no-fly zone. Donald Trump said this morning he would just stay out of Syria. All I can tell you, another 9-11 is coming. It's coming from Syria planned and inspired by ISIL. So this idea of leaving Iraq and Syria alone, ignoring ISIL, is going to lead to another 9-11. So one way to stop the Syrian refugees from flowing into uh, Jordan and Lebanon, who are going to be at risk, is to have a no-fly zone and a safe haven inside of Syria so they don't have to leave their own country. Well, the president is talking about having a coalition, having uh, our friends on the ground in the Middle East join in in this uh, war against ISIS. Is that not going to work? Not with him. I mean, he's never asked anybody to get a ground force. What I would do as president is I would go to the Sunni Arab states who hate ISIL and will not turn Syria over to Iran. Assad is a puppet of Iran. Russia supporting Assad is a nightmare for us. It's a good news for ISIL because they can recruit. So what would I do? I'd get Turkey and all the Arabs together to help form a regional army to go in and to destroy ISIL. 90% them, 10% us. But nobody's going to follow Barack Obama. You know, Donald Trump Trump said two things that really bother me. He blamed President George W. Bush today, he said that Bush was warned about 9-11 and ignored it. I, he should apologize to President Bush. President Bush is a good man. And he also said that Bush going into Iraq created ISIL. What created ISIL was Obama leaving Iraq. At the end of the day, ISIL, I blame Obama for ISIL. I blame Obama for the fall, uh, falling apart of Iraq, for the rise of ISIL in Syria, for the deterioration in the Mideast, for giving Iran $100 billion of new money to do anything they would like with. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I blame Obama for this mess. And a Republicans should be an alternative to Obama, not more the same. How do you how do you wrangle the spending issues? I mean, we're talking about a six hundred sure. billion dollar uh, expectation in terms of defense spending. We've got the smallest army what since World mm -hmm. War II. We've got the smallest yep. navy on record. Uh, how do you allocate the money toward defense at this moment in time? Well, 20 percent of one third of the budget is defense spending. You could eliminate the Department of Defense and not move the debt needle. <clears throat> I would rebuild the military. We're going to spend 2.3 percent of GDP on defense by 2021, half of what we normally spend. The smallest army since 1940, the smallest navy since 1915. I would go back to around 5% of the GDP spent on defense. I would deal with the unfunded liability that comes from the baby boom retirement uh, uh, regarding Medicare and Social Security. By 2040, all the money you send in taxes to Washington pays interest on the debt, Medicare and Social Security. So I'd means test benefits for people my income level. I make $175,000. We'd give up a little bit. I'd ask younger people to work longer. 
flatten out the tax code, pay down debt. That's where the debt is. It's not in the Defense Department. Real quick, we want to get John Hilsenrath here from the Wall Street Journal, Senator. Se Senator Graham, Donald Trump is leading the polls right now, despite yeah. your criticisms. If he wins the Republican nomination, will you rally behind him and support him? I'll support him, but he'll get, he'll get killed. I mean, his foreign policy is really weaker than Obama's. He's got this isolationist view coming up. But I just want to tell Republicans, I'm going to support our nominee. But if you send Donald Trump into the ring right. uh, against Hillary Clinton, she'll mop him up. He said we shouldn't have gone into Afghanistan after 9-11, for God's sake. Yeah, you know, we're, we're talking about Donald Trump being in the lead. And, of course, we know what Scott Walker said when he stepped down, yeah. basically saying those people who are not getting the kind of support need to step down. Uh, uh, that would include you, Senator. Are you planning on stepping down? Absolutely not. I'm going to make the case that I've got a plan to destroy ISIL. I'm the best prepared to be commander in chief on day one. Nobody's voted yet. These polls don't mean a damn thing right now. They're capturing celebrity and sound bites. New Hampshire, Iowa, South Carolina captures the real person. Let's see what happens after we vote. Let's see if Mr. Trump can stand the test of time. Mr. Carson's a fine man, but his approach after 9-11 was pretty bizarre. He would have declared energy independence and had the Arabs go get bin Laden. That made no sense to me, and I like Mr. Carson, but Mr. Trump has no plan to destroy ISIL, very much like Obama. I do. The yeah. key to this election is having somebody that can beat Hillary Clinton. You're not going to beat Hillary Clinton if your foreign policy is weaker than Obama's. Yeah, and, and by the way,